YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Today, Nick and I, Nick just ran back to the truck. We are out here practicing shooting my bow. We're out here practicing, Nick's filming me practicing. <laughs> I'm practicing shooting my bow for turkey season. So I am going to try and kill a turkey this year with my bow. So I'm sitting on, oh, let's see if you can see it. You'll see in a second. I'm sitting on a bucket and I have, this is like my turkey vest that I've been hunting in all season. And I'm going to try a couple different setups to see what I like the best, what works the best. We were just at the gym, so I've like, I got my, my tennis shoes on and I'm really smelly, so <laughs> thankfully you guys can't smell me through the camera, but we're going to try this out. See how it goes. Is your fly down? <laughs> So this arrow we found as we were walking in and you can see the field tip is very rusty. This was Nick's arrow. We shoot up here every so often, but we've been away for like three years and here is his old arrow. Normally I find arrows and think like, oh, I wonder, you know, what happened like was someone just practicing here did someone shoot at an animal i don't know just like wondering the story behind the arrow and this one happens to be ours which is funny but <laughs> okay i'm gonna set that aside i realized that this tree is going to get in the way so i need to move the bucket to the opposite side of the tree like right here in front Gotta move. So what I'm imagining is Turkey comes into the decoy, is so infatuated with the decoy that once he is doing his thing, I can kind of sit up and draw simultaneously, and then as soon as I'm set, fire one off. All of that movement, he will catch. So really, this situation will only work if he is just so fixated on that decoy. have this blind up regardless of the seat that I'm in just to keep me camouflaged from here down. I will need clearance from where my bow is going to be. So the way that this is set up right now is all good. This is getting me excited. Yikes! That branch that hit. shot this branch it didn't it didn't get in the way of my shot but it hit my bow and like made me nervous meaning like if I was in the field that could have caused a little hiccup I'm gonna twist that out of the way and try again it was also a lot harder to draw sitting down like this than I thought it was going to be and like last video I'm post gym so So yeah, feels a little harder than you. I feel like this is way too much movement and I need to be in a blind. Comment below with what you think. Tell me if you've hunted turkeys before with a bow.
That's exactly what we're looking for. The little turkey feather. It's a good sign. We already know they're here though. They're everywhere in Pennsylvania for the most part. I'm gonna switch it up and I'm gonna drop this down. I'm gonna sit on the ground, no bucket, and I'll move this down with me and we'll see. <laughs> I don't think this is going to work, but I wanna try it and I wanna see what happens. So let's move the bucket. Let's sit up against the tree like I would if I was going to shoot a shotgun, except I'm not gonna shoot this way. Shooting off to my left. I don't even know how this is going to feel. I've never shot my bow sitting on the ground like this. That's for sure. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Once I was actually at full draw, that felt totally normal. But getting it full draw and realistically I would probably have my legs like this so that's not unusual let me keep trying that <laughs> that's difficult so my bow is probably set to 53 pounds if I had to guess. I don't actually know what the poundage is because I play with it a little throughout the year. When I'm elk hunting, I typically try to make it a little bit heavier. When I'm hunting whitetail, I tone it down a bit just so it's more comfortable for me if it's freezing cold and I've been sitting in a tree stand for hours, you know. Um, so right now it's probably at about 53. And this is very difficult. Not surprisingly, because I thought it would be, but also kind of surprisingly, because it makes me feel like, uh, like I need to turn my boundage down. But I'm not going to, because I like where it's at. Bad shot. So I think it's very obvious that sitting on the ground is much more difficult than sitting on a bucket or a chair. So for me, I'm definitely not going to hunt with my bow sitting on the ground like this. I'll hunt sitting on a bucket or on a chair, but I love sitting on the ground and leaning up against a tree with a shotgun. I think it gives you a little more versatility just to move around. If you're in an area calling in the morning and the birds aren't acting up the way that you would like them to, being able to pick up and move and sort of reset in a different location is fun for me. I like that a lot. And actually, if you watched my South Carolina video, we did that. We picked up and moved so much. So with a bow and being forced to sit up on a chair, definitely kind of hinders you a little bit and it's a little bit more of a pain. So the other thing that I'm toying with is whether I want to use a full blind, a ground blind or not. This is just, I don't know, what would you call it? Like a brush blind? a mesh blind, something quick and easy that you throw up that's very portable. If you watched my Osceola turkey hunting videos, every single time we hunted, I used this and would just set it up, roll it up when we move, set it back up, so easy. Ground blind is much more permanent in a sense that you're not just gonna pick it up and move it. Like wherever that ground blind is, you are sitting and you're staying for the entirety of that hunt. So I want to use a ground blind or I, I at least wanna explore the idea more because last year I did a lot of solo turkey hunting, just leaned up against a tree with my shotgun. I didn't have this nice mesh blind or anything, but I was busted multiple times. 
and again I was solo hunting it was really my first year hunting turkey like really trying I had done it years prior just you know I don't know without giving it too much thought but I was really trying last year and I wrote in my hunting journal use a blind like don't try to do this again without using a blind and I think with a bow I probably should use a blind and just listen to my my younger self a year ago and give that a try I have a feeling if I go out and I try to hunt like this, I'll get into a situation where I would have been able to take a shot if I was in a ground blind. For example, when I was in South Carolina and that party of Jake's came in, if I had a bow and did all of that movement, I likely would have spooked at least one of them, which would have alerted the rest of them. And that would have blown it and I wouldn't have been able to take a shot. But because it was a shotgun, you know, totally different story. It's amazing how much it changes based upon the weapon that you're using. I found this so interesting. <laughs> and I'm really interested in hearing what you all have to say. Please leave comments below about your thoughts on this and, you know, the way that I'm practicing and the way that you would suggest hunting this. Because, again, this is new to me. This will be my very first time hunting turkey with a bow here in Pennsylvania. Should I shoot a couple more? Yeah. So another thing to consider is how am I going to call with my bow in a scenario like this? Hmm. I'm gonna have to think about that. We'll use a mouth call. Oh. I don't know why. I feel like I've gotten to the point where I am decent at bugling. I can bugle and get responses and I'm like a couple years into playing with bugling and cow calling. I'm worse at cow calling, but that's not the point. I have so much trouble turkey calling with a diaphragm call. I, I don't know why it's so different to me, but it is. So I don't know that I would be able to use a diaphragm call, but that would solve all of these problems. And then I could, Hunter Specialties makes a nice little hat clip, so you can just like throw your diaphragm in there if you don't want to keep it all soggy and gross in your mouth. So you can use it, pop it in there. That would be sweet. The other option, Nick will be with me for most, if not all, of this turkey hunting. So he could call too. So we do have some options. Maybe I should just learn how to use a diaphragm. That would solve all of my issues. One thing that I'm doing that I don't like that I do, but I don't know how to fix, when I draw, my hand is gripped in a certain position, and then when I actually shoot, I have to shift the bow in my hand. And I, I've been fussing with this since I started shooting, and I can't figure out how to comfortably draw it. Draw, draw it? That sounded like I had an accent all of a sudden. I can't figure out how to comfortably draw my bow and have my hand stay in the same position. I'll keep trying to. I, I just don't know. I like the way I moved that time better, but I didn't like my actual shot. I think I set my anchor point funny because I could feel my finger like underneath my ear and I was like, eh, it's not normally like that. But it was definitely different. I mean, it's only 15 yards, so at this range, it's all going to be a dead bird. But. So, that's going to conclude practicing in this position for tonight. Next week sometime, we'll definitely throw the blind up and practice out of the ground blind. 
to see how it differs and to see what I like better because the last thing I want is for me to get out there and then feel disappointed like I should have practiced more or tried different things. So we'll definitely do that. Right now though, we're gonna go scout shed hunt a little bit. Although I'm sure the sheds will be in the nasty part and I've got on <laughs> 10 shoes and capris, so. Matt found two yesterday in someone's front yard. Oh yeah, Nick's brother found two sheds in someone's front yard yesterday. What are the odds? So maybe we'll find them. Fun fact, it's also illegal to hunt on Sundays, which I don't like. That should be legal, but it's not. Okay, let's put this stuff away and then go scout a bit. Here, give me that. It is such a beautiful night. It hasn't been this warm in Pennsylvania for a while. And I was gone for a while, but it's just, it's so nice to be able to be outside and walk around. Um, would you find something? No. So really, we're kind of just walking on a trail, but keeping our eyes peeled for sheds. We've seen a bunch of tree stands and we've never really hunted this area. That is it, YouTube. We didn't find anything on our little walk, but it is so nice out. It was really nice just to walk around and be outside on such a beautiful day. We are going to film this type of video again with a ground blind. I'm excited to hear your comments, so I'll probably apply some of your advice in that next video. And that is it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.